We've got a casualty, we're on a two rope, rope access system here. So we've got our main line and backup line. We need to help this guy out, he's having an awful day. Now, there's another time and place to have a discussion about whether you rescue from the casualties lines or you rig your own set of lines or whether you just should have rigged to rescue in the first place. But for today and what we're doing, this will show you what you need to know. Um, I've come down to the casualty and I've just cleared his line out of the way, um, the line that his ID is on, and then I'm just going to clear the line out of the way as well so that no ropes are running down between our legs. That could get very uncomfortable very quickly. I've chosen to straddle the casualty quite early on, and that's just to keep him away from the wall. We've got a structure here which we don't want him to crash into all the way down. So just using my legs to apply a little bit of pressure and uh, keep the turbos nice and close. I'm going to achieve two different points of connection with our casualty. The first one is going to be my long cow's tail, which I'm going to put onto his D-ring there. I'm then going to build a short connection using a series of carabiners. And when you're making these connections with chains of carabiners, you just make sure that every single one of them gets done up. This is going to terminate on the carabiner of my ID. So that as the casualty's weight transfers onto me in a moment, the weight is going through here. Right, from this point I can start removing bits of equipment because the casualty has got two points of contact with me. He no longer needs his two points of contact on the rope. So we're going to take control of his ID and just lower him off so, the so we can transfer his weight onto my ID. There we go. So there's no weight on his ID anymore. So we can strip that out of here. And in some scenarios, it may be necessary to steal this um, for other elements of the rescue further down the line. We're then also going to take off his backup, which doesn't need that anymore. And again, stealing things like backups is quite a good idea. And now is a good time in the rescue to do it whilst you've got it in your hand and you're already dealing with it. You don't have to find it at a separate time later. So, our casualty is totally on me now. So, I'm just going to add a friction carabiner to the line coming out of my ID. And that means we're good to go. We'll take this man to the ground. So, folks, I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, we did manage to rescue my most lazy employee, who's now having a bit of a snooze. Um, that video was actually specially requested by a guy called Simon, who is a geocacher, who's gonna come do a little bit of rope work with me, so he can learn some extra bits, wants to look at using uh, an ASAP for the first time, and also wants to learn about doing some rescues, and if that ever came up, how he could be best prepared to approach those situations. Um, Please remember though that these videos are in no way meant to replace traditional in-person instruction. You absolutely must get yourself on a session or course with an instructor so you can learn these things in person. That way you can cover all of the risk assessing, all of the variables that we didn't discuss in this video um, and that will just set you up best so that you're ready to tackle these kind of situations. Remember. There are professional organisations out there such as iRata, so if you want to get into rope access work, that's the way to go. The sessions I provide are for people who want to take up these activities in a recreational sense. I hope that's been helpful for you all. I hope you have a great day. I've been Joel Self Outdoor Instructor. Goodbye.